and using Fiddler forever, things were going great. I could start looking at HTTPS uh, responses. Then mobile hit, right? People started coming and using phones and stuff. Well, I can run Fiddler on my, I can run Fiddler Classic on my Windows machine, but how do I trace a phone? So we're gonna look at, uh, we talked about proxies before, so I'm just gonna show you what I did on a phone, in this case on iOS, the settings for proxy is not where you would expect it to be. It turns out on iOS, you have to go into the uh, Wi-Fi settings. And if you go down to HTTP proxy, you can manually, so I went on my Windows machine here, I ran IP config and I found out that was my IP address. Then I went on my Apple and these devices have to be on the same network, right? So on my example, I'm at home, they're both on the same network. You can go on the phone then and say, please route your traffic to that IP address and the standard Fiddler port. Now I'm routing all the traffic from that phone is coming through Fiddler so I can do everything we just talked about. So on my phone then, iPhone, it would do that. I'd be able to see a trace. And if I went into the actual trace file, uh, you can save off Fiddler. So I haven't shown this yet, but I mean, you can save off the whole um, session with all the web sessions and such. But if I come in here and look, if I pull up the inspectors and I look at the header, you can see right there, it says it's an iPhone. So that's very powerful. So now I'm able to route other devices through my Windows machine and then still do everything I wanted to do with Fiddler. Breakpoints, it doesn't matter. But it was the first time I could actually do good traces from Android devices, iOS phones, tablets, all that kind of stuff. Some common issues I want to mention. So if we go back into Fiddler here, usually I will go get a trace. I'm going to hit Control F5. As soon as I get the trace I want, I turn off capturing here. Because like I said, if you run it on your own machine, there might be a lot of other stuff on your machine making requests that are going to fill up your trace and make it harder to see. So when I turn that off, I've done this before. I'll forget that I shut off capturing. I'll come in, I'll go in my browser again, and I'm just going to hit Control F5. I go over to Fiddler, and I'm like, where's all my traffic? It's not being caught. It's because I shut that off. So if you're aware, make sure that you check that. The other thing that you can do is, if you see this any process, <clears throat> I can click and drag that, and I can drop it on a specific instance of a browser. And what it'll do then is it'll say the process name up here. So similar to when you saw filters, that says I'm only gonna watch traffic now from that specific instance. And it's not uncommon that, that people do that. Then they close the browser, open up a new one. That's a different process, but they forgot to take this back off. So if it is doing a process, you can click here and it'll just say any process again, but that makes it uh, start to trace again. So just be aware that might be why you're not seeing some of the stuff you wanna see traced. I talked about .NET, um, .NET classes by default don't go through proxies. So you can set that in .NET. If you go into your application's config file, you can set up a default proxy. And here I'm just saying, if anytime you're gonna do HTTP related stuff, please use the proxy address. We saw that before. That's just this machine on that port. Now, when it comes to the browser to ASP.NET, I could always see that with Fitter. Now, when the ASP.NET pages are making HTTPS calls out to the internet or whatever, those will also get picked up by Fiddler. So again, if you, modern browsers understand this, they know how to use a proxy. If you're using a client and you're not seeing traffic, you need to be able to investigate how on that client am I supposed to set a proxy address? So 